Welcome to NBS Show, episode number 229. I am your host, Norman Santo. Joining me today is Will. Hello there, you lovely and fantastic people. Hey there, Will. Hey, Norman. The people miss you. It's been a while. <laughs> well, I was moving. Ah, yeah. Moving on up. Moving on up. Good to know. Do you have a better place now, from what I understand? Oh, well, the rent's cheaper, and the location's nice, and the internet's better, and the... Yep, yep, it's, it's a better place. I've moved on to a better place, Norman. <laughs> Forget about me. <laughs> Move on with your life. Oh, no. I have a life. <laughs> also joining us today is Tyandaga. Look at me, back at it again with another week of the MBS show. Yay, <laughs> the people love you. Woo. I hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, this would be very so awkward. Long. Oh, my. Yeah, um, people love you because you're Tyan Daiga, the deer of the fandom. Yes, it's the antlers, I'm telling you. Yep, yep. That's the key. And also joining us is Blair. Blair Shan. Hello. Hey, Blair, how are you doing? I'm just another weirdo, don't mind me. <laughs> uh, I'm doing okay. If I do understand, you brought a friend, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. Ah, <laughs> who is said friend? Well, it's just more than a friend. Oh, Everybody, meet Boyd. <laughs> Hello, Boyd. Yeah. Hello. So, when you say more than a friend, is he your boyfriend? Maybe. Ooh. <laughs> hey, now, hey, now, Norman. Norman, I think we can uh, guess just by his name that all questions of that are null and void. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Ow. Ow. What the a... pun, it hurts. <laughs> Uh, much good. Uh, welcome to the show, everyone. Uh, especially you guys at home listening oh. to this. This is the level of professionalism that we have. <laughs> what are you talking about? Somebody you have no professionalism at all. I know. <laughs> but anywho, um, before we officially start, uh, I need to ask a few questions. And uh, I should have told you guys beforehand, but you know what? It's a surprise. Those questions are favorite character, favorite episode. How did you become a fan of the show, and what do your family and friends think about your love for this show? So, Blair, you've been here once before, so I'm going to refresh everyone and just ask two. Favorite character? Fluttershy. Oh, right. Fluttershy is awesome. And Discord. Discord is also awesome, too. I don't, I don't strip them, though. What? I don't strip them. How could you I not? I strip this <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> 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 I know people are going to probably hate me. <laughs> no, you, you do have some supporters, I think. And episode... Holy crap, it's been a while. Since I watched, like... The last episode I watched was probably, like, two weeks ago. <laughs> two weeks ago. Still not bad. <laughs> and the favorite episode, like, ever? I don't remember what I said last time. I don't think I have an answer for that. I, I, don't, I don't remember. Oh, the, next time on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Would you like to ask the audience? Uh, no, if I did that, I'm pretty oh, sure we'd have a riot on our hands. <laughs> Hello, friends. What help me? You're on your own here. <laughs> oh, I... It's your memory. <laughs> um, uh, okay, Richard, I'll just take okay. the fifty. Fi- I'll just take the fifty. Fi- I'll just take fifty fifty. <laughs> okay, we'll get Meriduel off there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, from the records, it says that Return of Harmony one and two is your favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's not where so it has to be that one. <laughs> it's like, did I say that? <laughs> Are you sure I said that? <laughs> no, no, no. I was, I was just trying to remember what the what the episode was about, and yeah, I now I remember. That was when uh, Discord became good. Uh, I I don't think so. It was okay. Discord became good. It was the oh, first wait. time Discord appeared. What is with my brain today? <laughs> uh, because they are in the Can show. <laughs> uh, no problem then. So, anywho, um, Void, as for you, uh, favorite character? Definitely Luna. Luna. Luna is an awesome answer. And episode? To be honest, I don't even know myself. Um, I tend, yeah, I tend to like any of the episodes with her in it just because <laughs> it just comes. Yeah. But if that's the case, I'd probably, I'd probably <laughs> say the Halloween episode. Oh, um, let me see. That was Nightmare Nights, I think. What was mm-hmm. the episode called? I mean, right? Oh, I, just... I think that's no, what it was that called. Was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, having a you got it. hard time to remember the episode name. But yeah. Nailed it. No, it's Luna Eclipse. Yeah. There you go. That's it. 
So how did you become a fan of the show, Void? Actually, I don't recall exactly how it happened. Um, I do remember that I had a friend who was into it, and he was he was one of those types that I sit there and go, all right, he's a little weird, but he's cool. I'm just going to let him do his thing. And I kept getting posts from him about it, and uh, at one point that uh, that all stopped, so I can't exactly say that was the key. But yes, uh, I did eventually at one point just catch the show on air at one point and just sat down and watched through an episode. And I'm sitting there going, wow, okay, this is no worse than anything I watched as a kid. <laughs> Why is everybody he so does. angry about this? My, my little brothers watched SpongeBob for crying out loud, and that, boy, that makes my brain hurt. Yeah, hey, that's true. Well, depends I on what season. <laughs> The earlier season oh, no, no, was no, good. No, 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 no. I have not found a single bit of that art that I can stand. Really? You don't like the jokes? I I, I can't stand the jokes for the art style. Oh. He gets fire yeah. underwater. Oh, if you don't like that, I've got to wonder how you felt about Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack. Who? What? Yeah. Where? <laughs> I, I, oh, I remember watching one. that. <laughs> it's, it's, prob- it's probably a godsend then that you didn't see that. Think, think SpongeBob only with even less <sighs> effort. Oh, wow. Oh, ow. Wow. Okay, less effort in writing, but definitely a very unique and interesting art style. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, wow. It was using a lot of, like, real-life textures, too. Ooh. So, Void, what do your family and friends think about your love for this show? For those who actually know about it, I'm not exactly a humongously social person to begin with, but most of my friends either... Came a, came around after that fact, the ones that I have currently, or else just don't seem to bother with it too much. Uh, I've got a buddy of mine uh, named Aitu who is the biggest jokester on the face of the earth, in my opinion. And he makes fun of it, but he never does so in a way that's actually demeaning. So I keep him. He's cool. As far as my family goes, um, the only person who actually knows about it properly is my mother. And amazingly enough, I told her about it, and she sits there and goes, huh, well, there's far worse shows you could be that interested in. I'm sitting here going, <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose so. Oh, wow. Does it mean she knows a lot of other shows? Uh, well, let's put it this way. I've got three little brothers that are all under the age of 11, mm-hmm. and so... Watching them grow up, um, they've they've been sitting there watching television, and mom and dad walk through and go, "Okay, that's going off now." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me and guess. yes, yes. In case you're wondering, yes, SpongeBob is one of those. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> I personally like the older season of SpongeBob because of the jokes. They they were written smart. Not now, SpongeBob is. Eh. I've watched a few episodes, but it never got, like, caught my eye, really. It wasn't, even, like, something special. <laughs> yeah. But anywho, um, thank you for answering those questions, guys. So, let's jump right into it. When you were here, you were a divan artist. You draw pony art, right? Yes, and still do. Ah, okay. Still awesome. going strong. <laughs> yeah, awesome, awesome. And thank you for some of the art that you did. That, those, that was just awesome on you. <laughs> and also... Is that a cat? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. <laughs> and void. <laughs> uh, and void. You you here are an artist too, right? Mm-hmm. To some degree. Mm. And from what you guys told me earlier, that you're involved in the Follow Equestria project. I would say that right now I'm, yeah, on the back burner is that I still have all my connections there, but no one has contacted me for any work lately, so. Either they replaced me or the entire department just kind of went poof. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody tells me anything. It's terrible. Well, no work for me, but still, I'm waiting for it. Yeah, he was a vector oh, artist for weapons. Ah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, we, at, uh, at the time, we actually had a weapons department. I think there was only three people, but really, that's all we needed. <laughs> we had a uh, retired military. Um, I forget now. Um, uh Awesome, uh, awesome fellow that I worked with. He designed um, the weapons in such a way that if, if you've ever seen some animations or bit and piece work where they're trying to get, I mean, it's Fallout Equestria. There's guns everywhere, and you're trying to get a pony to hold a pistol. <laughs> no, ain't gonna work. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't work like that. 
So um, we actually went through the process of tearing apart the designs and putting them together in such a way where they would actually work. And uh, so far, we actually did a pretty darn good job. I think they're still using those designs, too. Um, I just don't know what they've done since then. I, for one, have been wondering, like, how do ponies hold, well, guns or shoot guns? Like, they, they're, well, <laughs> they don't have fingers. <laughs> for a unicorn, that would make sense. Oh, yeah, true. I mean, to unicorn like a normal anything. gun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for well, like uh, like a Pegasus or uh, like a Air Pony, that it's impossible. Actually, um, the the follow the question story itself, KCAT um actually addressed that in one of her chapters. <laughs> cool. Um, they they there was um main characters running around um wielding a uh, wielding a few guns at one point, and is saying they're going, how do Earth Ponies handle this stuff? <laughs> it's like, what do they do? They hold it in their mouth, pull the trigger with their tongues, <laughs> then runs across a set of raiders. And it's saying they're going, holy cow, they do that. <laughs> and then you get shot at again. Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> oh, wow. To which then yeah. you realize pony, Earth ponies have excellent dental. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, there is, There was a lot of discussion when it came around that, and I don't know for sure what Stable Tech actually settled on. But we at one point threw up the idea of simplifying things and actually making um hoof triggers like I think Mad Hotaru's done, which I personally absolutely love the designs, think it's fantastic. Um we got we got up to the idea of just adjusting things in anatomy to try and make things work slightly. And mostly that's for how well they could stand on their rear hooves as opposed to normal. Mm-hmm. Um but in the end, I don't know where they ended up. Uh, it, I can pretty well guarantee, considering the people that I was working with there, that um, if, in fact, everything is going a, uh, going apace as it seems, um, it's still going to turn out to be a fantastic animation. Oh, cool. And this is a segue that is too good to pass up, but, well, at least you guys will be working on uh, Fallout Los Pegasus. Hmm... Is this has the same game like Fallout New Vegas? Yeah. See? No, no. Not your own there. You get a gold star. You try. Yes, you, you, try. Try. Really, you can hear the collective sighing of the group. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I know it's good. Hello, anyway, terrible segue aside. Um, looks like New Ve- uh New Vegas. Sorry, uh, Las Vegas is having its own pony convention Woo-hoo. there you go Yay! so it's going to be at the golden nugget hotel and casino october 6 to 8 of next year so if you guys want to pre-book your tickets now it's well it's available now um ticket goes as low as if i remember right 60 dollars for the weekend pass and High as 100 for the Weekend Plus. That gives you a lot of things, more benefits, con exclusive merch bags. And if you want to back them up, you can back them up for as low as 40 bucks to as high as $5,000. That gives you a lot of things, really a lot. Go check out their website for more info. And, well, Las Vegas is a good place to find love, right? No, <laughs> or lose all your money. Oh yeah, true that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Don't go get a gambling bag. No. <laughs> Talking <laughs> about money. Don't go gambling too much, guys. <clears throat> Talking about money, um, Blair, Void, you have something to talk about, it, right? You don't have money. <laughs> oh, wait, he's not talking about robbing us, you goof. <laughs> 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 yeah, but um, you guys, uh, well, you guys have this project that you want to do, and that's well, basically, well, I'm, I think I'm playing Cupid right now. Like, not really, but I think I am. Uh, how do I, how do I even go into this? How do I even explain this? Uh, well, where are I you suppose I'll start anything that from the beginning. <laughs> True that. No, but that gets boring. What if you start at the end or start somewhere in the middle and work both ways at once? <laughs> <laughs> Some movie that's did... called in media. That's that's there, there was a movie about that. It was called Pulp Fiction. Oh yeah. 
Uh, Did it work? You know what? Never mind. I think we'll start from the beginning. (laughs) (laughs) Good choice. Good choice. All right. Basically, um, well, if you want to put it point blank, Amelia and I fall in love. So uh, collectively, daw right now. (laughs) Now everyone knows. (laughs) I know. Everyone knows. This is bad. How? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Seriously, I think start. I think uh, I think starting up the Facebook page was probably enough for everybody to know. <laughs> uh, but please go carry on. Sorry for interrupting. I uh, no worries. Here's the catch, though. Of course, um, anybody who can tell by the accent or anything else, I'm in Texas and she's in Poland. Mm. So, yeah, I we've we've <laughs> we've gone over a lot of this in discussion. We've uh, looked at the options of either me moving to Poland, and uh, which I actually considered a viable option, or, or Amelia coming to America and settling here in Texas with me. We even looked at the possibility of going to other countries as well. Um, but in the long run, we've decided that we're going to settle here in Texas. And in order to do that, um, that's going to take a boatload of money. Truth be told, I've, I've done the research. Uh, immigration papers don't cost that much. Maybe a couple hundred bucks and everything's filed, figured out, and done. And if we're exceptionally lucky, that's all it's actually going to take. But I kind of doubt it. It never does. <laughs> so we, we have... Uh, we have worked together. Uh, we created a little animatic, which um, we'll have a link to later. Um, and we created a page for our friends and our family and for anyone else who wants to help out to donate to the cause of, of covering um, Amelia's um, immigration fees for getting into the U.S. And uh, that's... That's, uh, that's probably our biggest, uh, that's probably our biggest priority right now. I mean, I'm even taking on extra hours at work, probably more than I probably should be. <laughs> and, uh, we're trying to, we're trying to make this happen one way or another. Ah, uh, awesome. All for love. People say love is easy and whatnot. I, I say that's poppycock. Like, you have to do a lot of work to make it work. Indeed, indeed. And from what you guys are doing here, it's, well, one step. So, how much do you guys really need? Well, in all honesty, um, most of it, when it comes to the immigration stuff itself, it's probably going to end up being somewhere in the uh, somewhere in the mid thousand range. Um, I'm thinking, like as not, it's going to be somewhere between somewhere between three thousand and uh, six thousand dollars for just that. If ever if if we take into account a couple of things that could go wrong. The possibility of having to having to hire a lawyer for one or two things throughout the process. I'm not stupid. I'm not hire, I'm not. I'm not retaining a lawyer right off the bat when we might not even need one. Mm. <laughs> but um, I actually got some advice from several people who have immigrated here who said, "Yeah, we got a lawyer, and all they ended up doing was stamping paperwork and telling us where to sign stuff," <laughs> <laughs> which which we could do ourselves. Uh-huh. Um, but um i'm all i've set the goal on the gofundme for 10,000 because if we meet that goal and especially if we meet it in a hurry i can go over there early and spend a little bit more time with her and her family and we actually will have enough left over to actually make a decent honeymoon out of it and actually do a little bit of traveling and uh, that's that's uh, that's a site a, for building a home that too We've already got everything set up where as soon as, as soon as she's over here, we're essentially set for quite a little while. The only thing that we need to do is cover general bills. We don't, we've got a place to live. We've got transportation. Everything's already lined out. All we need to do is cover our food and rent and we should be fine. Um, but we need to actually be able to cover the costs of bringing her here and that's where that's where the that's where the major stuff comes in and i'm looking i'm looking for a huge blessing to be perfectly honest i i'm not usually the type to i'm not usually the type to ask for anything 
but because of the circumstances, I fully expect something awesome to happen here. <laughs> That we can do, like just hope for the best, and you know, just give mm-hmm. a little yeah, prayer. We're all hoping. Mm-hmm. So I do understand the whole thing for traveling because traveling to well, personally for me, traveling to the states is going to cost me ten k of my own currency. So that will be mm-hmm. times divided by three. So that will be around three k for you. you know, give or take. Give or take. Uh, so, um, if I got really, if I got really lucky, and I, I have family that are something of globe trotters. I've got, um, I've got two different sets of relatives that, uh, live over in South Africa or have at one point or another. Uh, one is actually coming back here shortly. Hmm. And, um, I, I have people who know how to travel and they, they've been, they're going to t- be talking with me to help me figure out what kind of good deals I can get. But even at the absolute best that I've seen so far, if we got the if we got the lowest tickets that I've been able to get my uh, get uh, get cited so far, it would cost fifteen hundred dollars for airfare alone for me to go there, come back, and for her to come to the U.S. And that's if we sniped every good deal we could get, and we probably won't. Uh, and also, you have to remember that sometimes, even when you do get good tickets, those flights might be canceled or whatnot. So it's like a uh, trouble there. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, then on top of that, you have to add in that it's going to cost a certain amount of money just to live. Now, I've got one good thing going for me when it comes to that. Um, the difference between pricing and income uh, with the U.S. and Poland is such that if I do it right, and that's a bit of an if there, but if I do it right, I should be able to make a – if I make – if I ha- bring a month's worth of living – I should be able to actually spread that a full two months because mm-hmm. the price of food is so much lower over there. The price of rent is a great deal lower. I can basically rent a room for what I would do, for what I would normally over here barely be able to get an RV slot. <laughs> All right. So the details are there. You plan to work out something, and I do notice that you want to do metal work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've always loved uh, I've always loved the idea of jewel crafting, and even even before doing any research into that, I was a welder. And when I got done with uh, my training in welding, I they apparently they had a ton of paperwork they wanted to finish before I actually graduated. And so I'm I poked the instructor and said, "There's an anvil and a hammer and a torch out there. Can I go, uh, you know, make stuff?" <laughs> So I, I took, um, I took a couple of, a couple of handmade tools and a couple of guides that I had made with a few pieces of metal lying around and started making stuff. Um, I've, uh, at the time I just, uh, bent stuff around until I made, uh, until I made people's names, made it fairly artistic. And I made, uh, a, I made a metal rose for my mom for Mother's Day at one point. Oh. And I, uh, I, I looked at this and I'm like, I, I like doing this. Uh, it's blacksmith work is not exactly easy, but it's a very, very fulfilling thing in my eyes. And so I kept at it, had a whole lot of fun. And uh, I've gone through and created several different things along those lines as a result of that. And I'm looking forward to the possibility of being able to being able to actually set up a shop and start making things regularly. I do hope that it works out because I've seen a few YouTube videos, like for example, the Man at Arms YouTube page. They do a lot of video oh, games. Oh yes, they're good. They're good. Yeah, but there's another. Oi, oi. <laughs> don't get me going. <laughs> there's another guy I saw. I'm not really professional, like, but he has a YouTube page, and his name is Mike Cthulhu. Same concept. Uh, name doesn't ring a bell, but yeah, he does same thing. Like he does um video game weapons or fantasy weapons, like. He just does the whole weapon things and look at him do his metal work is very hypnotizing. It's I for yeah, example fascinating. Yes. For example, it's um doing the Final Fantasy X Orange Sword. Uh he, Oh I saw that one. Yeah. He the video's total is at fifty five minutes long and I thought like I'm just gonna watch a few, maybe skip here and there. I watched the whole thing from start to be start to end. <laughs> It's like oh okay. I basically like put a 
I put it in like one side of the screen when I was drawing, and that kind of like got me into it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <clears throat> to one point, I stopped drawing it just to keep watching. <laughs> I know. So yeah. it's like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like, how did he do that? Uh, it's much. It's, you know, it's just too awesome. It's just too awesome. As another random aside from that, you mentioned yeah, you mentioned getting hypnotized. That's actually another skill that I've picked up over the years. Mm. I'm, I'm not kidding. I actually know how to hypnotize people, and it's fun. <laughs> yeah, I had, I sure had fun when I had a trigger to yawn. <laughs> Oi, that was your it's fault. It's fixed. You know no, it. Don't worry. <laughs> Can you explain no, what happened? Uh, essentially, essentially, what happened is I is she was on her way to going to sleep, and actually asked me, "Well, can you hypnotize me into sleeping?" And I'm saying they're going, "Well, that shouldn't be too awful hard." So I just took her through, just walked her through a basic, uh, a basic hypnotic induction, and got down to the end of it. And of course, I'm sitting there going, "Well, it'd be nice if I could actually prove to her that I did this in the morning, because she's probably not going to remember because she." She does tend to forget a few things when she's on her way to go into sleep. And, yes. <laughs> and so I um I actually put in what's what's called the reinduction trigger. Usually usually this is the thing that hypnotists use to they bring somebody out they bring somebody out of a trance and then they work with them a bit and then they drop them back in and work with the with their subconscious mind and they do this several times throughout a session. And um, I tried it the next day and she yawned <laughs> and stayed awake. <laughs> and I'm sitting here going, wait a minute. Wait, that's, that's not supposed to. And then I try it again and she yawns again. She's like, well, how are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> Magic. So I'm like, okay, somebody fell asleep while I was working with them. So I'm just going to sit here and, you know, what, uh, do it again. <laughs> Uh, he he was like he was like n- maybe not harassing uh, but like teasing me with this <laughs> for like for like a for like a good month. But then I like she, one the, one day I asked him to like do it like multiple times so maybe I'll fall asleep. And what I did was basically try to like not make myself yawn, just like force myself and uh, not to do it, and it worked. Boy, you bit yourself. <laughs> And I still works. <laughs> See, this is I'm something free. that I this is something that I that I try to explain to people because there's there's two different there's two different camps of silly people when it comes to hypnosis as far as their opinions of it. Uh, one is, oh, that's a bunch of poppycock that doesn't work at all, and the other is it is, oh my gosh, don't look at me, you're going to hypnotize me. It's going to be I, I won't I want everybody to be able to get out of it, <laughs> and. I have to explain to people, and it's hilarious. I literally have to explain to them, first off, if, in fact, I put something in maliciously that's just like every time every time you hear the word and, you sneeze, <laughs> eventually your brain is going to sit there and go, why am I still doing this? <laughs> the, the, the guy's not even here, and this is stupid. Why am I still doing this? And eventually your brain will sit there and go, well, then let's stop doing it. Because, like, like anybody says, it's all in your head. That's actually correct for once. <laughs> uh, talking about hypnotize, I think I've seen a video by Game Theory from MatPat explaining the whole breakdown of how hypnotizing works. And, yeah, it's not really black magic and whatnot. It's just suggestions. <laughs> it's just a theory. <laughs> I ain't gonna say that line. Uh, <laughs> a game. Ah. Somebody had to say it. Uh, but you were saying, Floyd? It is an exceptionally helpful thing. Let, let, let's put it this way: you've you've heard of what's called the placebo effect, which mm-hmm. is any you can give somebody a sugar pill, tell them it's Tylenol, and their headache goes away. <laughs> um, now, this doesn't always work, granted, and that's, that's true, it doesn't. But somebody once described hypnosis as the biggest placebo effect on the face of the earth, and they intended it as an insult, but it's actually pretty well true, because all the placebo effect is, is you are under the impression that this sugar pill is Tylenol. 
Therefore, your brain thinks it is. And so your brain sits there and goes, OK, that's Tylenol. So it should work. Right. And so if it just basically sits there and goes, well, um, no new chemical inductions, nothing's weird is happening. Well, let's just get rid of the headache anyway, because that was actually Tylenol. Right. <laughs> And that's essentially what the brain does under hypnosis. Um, you can actually sit there and tell the brain, tell the brain that what you're feeling is not pain, it's pressure, or what you're feeling is, what you're feeling is, uh, a positive experience of some sort, if it's something that's just annoying. I actually had, uh, somebody at one point who had lost, the, I kid you not, who had lost the ability to be tickled <laughs> and was wondering whether or not I could reintroduce that into their system. And I'm sitting there going, well, yeah, uh, that, that shouldn't be that hard. <laughs> so did you? Uh, unfortunately, no, that one, uh, that one decided, uh, against it at one point or another. I'm not exactly sure why now that I think of it. Because he wants the talent. It's a mutant. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> immune, to, immune to tickling. The amount of things that'd be useful for, I guess, is a lot. <laughs> yeah, depends. So I have heard of stories of people u- using similar meditative techniques to actually shut off pain yes. as a form of coping. Mm-hmm. And actually, that's that's the thing is that the reason this works is everything that you experience, everything that you deal with. People constantly sit there and think, my arm hurts. Well, actually, no, it doesn't. What's happening is your nerves are sending a signal to the brain that says there is damage here. Here's how bad the damage is, or here's how bad I think the damage is, like with a paper cut. (laughs) And your brain sits there, takes the signal, and goes, okay, this is what signal I'm receiving. Here are the other factors that are in existence, what I'm currently doing, how, how focused I am on something, um, what else is currently going on? Am I actually properly in danger? And then it, in, then it takes that and it processes the sensation from the nerves into an actual feel, feeling sensation. That did not sound professional at all. <laughs> and, uh, it, it and it then interprets it and then gives you the sensation to actually experience. And therefore, Everything gets filtered through the subconscious mind. So technically speaking, unless something is so strong that it can override it, like actually when you first break a bone, Mm. it's going to completely override that because guess what? You just broke a dead gum bone. (laughs) That's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But it is actually possible afterwards to overwrite the pain and slow it down so that you don't have to deal with it directly. Now, Everybody that I've ever dealt with that's a trainer in this makes it very clear, do not, under any circumstances, completely get rid of it. That is possible. Never get rid of pain because it's a very important indicator. But at the same time, if somebody's dealing with chronic pain or chronic issues, it can be nullified because regardless of what it is, it's still being fed through the brain and just like just like somebody who's had a stroke and their brain is now processing signals incorrectly, it is possible to do that deliberately under hypnosis to actually make different sensations appear less painful or less annoying or not constantly nickling at the back of your brain. Hmm. I can understand. It's exceptionally That's, useful. Th- this kind of conversation is really fun. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, <laughs> tangents aside, wow, this show is awesome for these tangents. So anyway, tangents aside, <laughs> you guys have reward perks for your, uh, GoFundMe, right? Yes. Yes. Um, I already, uh, today, well, I'm gonna take this episode, but they actually finished one reward and I'm just waiting for the response from the other uh, person that done it. So what, what are those rewards? Like if you can just, um, tell us. Well, in basic. Well, first oh. few are are drawings from me, mm. and further going further is basically like metal works. So what what uh, Void was explaining earlier. Mm-hmm. So Void, are you still working at the mill? Uh, no, unfortunately, the metal industry down here kind of yeah fell apart, mm. and because I'm not a 20 year veteran of the uh, metal works industry. They did, they opted to keep the really good ones 
and they let me go on several different places. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm working in a completely different industry at the moment. Uh, but still, um, <laughs> how are you going to fulfill those perks? Well, my intention is that after, after, um, Emilia and I have settled down over here, um, we're going to start up a small shop and I'm just going to, I'm just going to buy metals. I'm going to make them, make the molds myself because what I'm planning on doing is a method called lost wax casting, um, otherwise known as investment casting. This is, this used to be exceptionally difficult because, uh, because you actually had to have really good modeling skills when it came to making the original wax version of a ring or a piece of jewelry or an earring or something like that. And nowadays you can actually do this with 3D printers. And I have access to two or three actually, um, through either friends or through services offered nearby. I'm in, I'm in Fort Worth, Texas right now. And there is a, there is a library not too far from here that actually has two or three 3D printers and the software to run them. And they're free to use. You just provide the materials. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Um, indeed. <laughs> and so I, I am very good at designing things in 3D as long as they're not organic. I suck at that. <laughs> <laughs> and I can design the rings. I can design jewelry and pieces and whatnot with gem settings ready and in place, print them out, and then I can cast them in the appropriate material and make them in that manner very easily. And I still is there. There's no getting around the fact that that I can I can make the original model and it will still be a little bit grainy. I'll still have to clean it up. I'll still have to do a little bit of extra carving to make sure that it actually looks like I intended it to. And but I can make just about anything anybody wants. And this this is one thing that um, Emilia is going to be helping me with is we're going to work together on actually designing custom jewelry pieces. Um, so basically somebody comes to us and say, I want a piece of eight. Now I want an 18 karat gold um, ring that has, that uh, looks something like this, that has these features. And I can sit there and go done. We got it. Hmm, all right. Yeah. Basically how, how, how the shop, uh, like we imagine it to work. Basically, I would be like the first, uh, the first to sketch it, like to show the client mm -hmm. and to like, uh, see if they want to change anything or like uh, add something or if it's any, and uh, like any good, then like actually draw it in the art program and then get it over to Void so he can uh, work, work it in 3D. Then the whole molding process starts. Mm -hmm. Well, good luck on you guys with that. It's one heck of an endeavor. I wish you the best of luck on it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And everything can be found in the show notes. And well, if people don't want to read the show notes, they can go to your website, which is gofundme.com slash Amelia and Bill. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Bill. That's my name. Don't forget the why. You'll get somebody else. <laughs> yeah, so it's <laughs> Amelia and Billy. But if people are too lazy to type that in, just check the show notes. It's just a click away. And the other half on that is, of course, this being a GoFundMe, the biggest thing that is that is necessary in this is as much as even, and I, I have to remind people at times, there's a lot of people who sit there and go, oh, it's a $10,000 goal. I need to give like 200 bucks. I can't do that. I'm broke. $5 donations go just as long. And we are actually counting the donations as cumulative. In other words, if you, if you, um, if you gave, if you gave $5 four times, that accumulates to $20, and you've actually hit art level one. You get a sketch from Amelia. Oh. Um, that's how we're – either that or, like, if you if you donated $20 five times, you could either get uh, a sketch from her um, or you could uh, or you could ask for a, a flat color drawing for the $70 one and a sketch as well. Um, no, wait. I think I did my math wrong there. Anyway, something like that. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're Basically, actually... Basically, every bit, every bit helps. Mm -hmm. Like, as yeah. people always say. Even if you, like, can donate, all, sharing always helps. Mm -hmm. If someone were to donate the high end, which is 2000, they can ask for 100 sketch from you? I don't, I don't think <laughs> we're gonna get that. 
All right, I wouldn't be too awful surprised, but here's here's the thing, and we're actually in my in my mind, especially with the metal stuff, um, the only thing that the the only thing that actually slows me down is the actual weight of the gold, because obviously I can't give away more than what I've received, but I've uh, I'm still exceptionally generous when it comes to when it comes to the design phase. Um, most of the time that would actually cost extra just for designing the stuff. I mean, that's the weight of the, the weight of the, the, the weight of the material is nothing compared to what actually goes into creating it. But at the same time, we're, we're actually fairly generous when it comes to, when it comes to the rewards themselves, especially if it comes to someone who's given multiple times. So this is, this is not something where we're sitting here pinching pennies going, oh, you didn't quite meet this level, or you're, or you're splitting this up and you can only get exactly this many dollars of rewards. No, we're actually going to be fairly loose with that when it comes to, when it comes to somebody who's given, who's given us something of value. All right. So when does the, the uh, funny page last? Um, technically speaking, these things don't actually shut off, but we're, we're pretty much going to shut it down next uh, next year once we've uh, once we've actually met in person because um, well once I've gotten enough to go over there and and bring her back um, I'm not going to I'm not going to leave this open forever after that just to just to keep trying to pull in more cash um, my intention is just basically to cover the needs that we have and. Uh, once we have that, we're going to end up closing it down and giving everybody a big thank you, making sure everybody's gotten the rewards that they've requested. And at the same time, um, if it doesn't meet the goals that we need, I'm probably going to shut it down after we've actually gotten back and I've started giving out the actual metal rewards. Because when it, when it comes down to it, if it, if it hasn't reached, if it haven't reached the goal by the time, uh, by the time we get back, uh, there's not much point in continuing it from then on out. We're already together. We've already started working together, and we're not going to need any more help after that point. Mm, all right, good to know. And I do hope that you at least reach your goal or half of it. If we hit half the goal, and that would actually be more than enough to help out immensely. That's the reason I set it as high as I did. Is literally I asked advice from several people that I respect very well and they literally said just shoot for the stars. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, Okay. <laughs> I can I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Am I doing it right? <laughs> uh well, talking about shooting for the stars, I know a few people, um they're kind of friends of the show and personal friends of mine and well, they kind of did a Pony Convention and said Pony Convention is Project C Pony Con. They recently did a Indiegogo page and well, they hit their goal. 5k. Fantastic. Quite a number. Yeah. And well, if they could do it, you guys could do it too. At least hope so. <laughs> yes. I hope so too. And well, um, Project C Pony Con is going to be the first, uh, international or joint venture pony convention from the Southeast Asia region. So it's going to be representative from Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, and also, hmm, I am derping here, but there's going to be a few uh, countries working here, and it's going to be in Bangkok, Thailand. And well, the math is there, it's kind of cheap traveling, so probably honeymoon here, maybe? <laughs> Hey, after after traveling back from uh, after traveling back from um, from Europe, I don't know if we're going to have a whole lot left. And besides, if I if I actually if I actually have my way, if I have enough pulled together between the GoFundMe and my own savings, um, I'm planning on I'm planning on taking my girl to an actual French restaurant so I can actually sit there and go, Hey, hey, did you do that? <laughs> did you did you do that for your honeymoon? I did. <laughs> <laughs> Travelings aside, still uh, it would be an awesome idea if you could. Uh, but still, the French restaurant seems nice too. <laughs> yeah, it'd be awesome to meet you in real life and like hang out. Mm-hmm. Yes, as a friend of mine said, fish tachi, much good. But still, I do wish for the best for you guys because love is hard. Like I've played the game for a while now, and some people just say, "What is love?" 
Maybe it doesn't work. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No problem. I was expecting it. So is now a good time for me to talk about my spaceship fun? <laughs> oh god, no. <laughs> so, uh, random question aside, uh, when will you be heading to, well, to Blair? Well, that uh, that depends on the GoFundMe itself. Um, my own income is enough to where I should be able to I should be able to head over there um, in the late spring or early summer of next year. But if if this goes exceptionally well, um, I will leave as soon as I have enough in the GoFundMe to cover uh, to cover uh, all the expenses that are coming in. And if it looks as though there's enough, if if it looks as though there's enough money coming in um on a fairly regular basis through this through all the all the all the shares through Facebook and everything else um we we may actually be able to pull everything together in fairly short order um if uh, it, the absolute best case scenario in my eyes is everything comes everything comes together in a hurry and we are able to meet up sometime this winter. I, if I can be there for Christmas, I will probably just about fall apart. <laughs> ah, well, talking about Christmas, <laughs> I don't know if you planned it that oh. way, but still, talking about Christmas, <laughs> uh, you could enjoy your Christmas with a pony kind of Christmas album. Hmm. It's a very thing. nice lead-in. <laughs> I know. I, 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 knowing this I'm show, I'm not it on purpose. I swear. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you know the difference between the, a human Christmas and a pony Christmas is, pony Christmas is literally we must all get together and love each other, or we'll all die. <laughs> <laughs> well, ain't it that real, real life? Like, no? Oh, yeah, I thought that was real life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'm getting along just fine, not getting along with people. <laughs> uh, but still, but still, um, you can also. <laughs> they did this last year with, um, well, get this. Uh, their album called "A Pony Kind of Christmas," and their second album for this year is called "It's a Pony Kind of Christmas." Great naming convention, guys. But still, um, you can enjoy a lot of good Chris pony, <laughs> pony team Christmas song. Uh, the list goes from. Uh, Jingle Bells to Deck the Halls to Silent Night. Last year, I got cold for Christmas. Sorry, that was last year's thing. Hmm. But, <laughs> uh, but still, you can still enjoy it. It's, going, it's coming out October 7th, I read, right? Perfect for Halloween. There's a good <laughs> gift idea. <laughs> oh my god. Just say, is it not a little bit early? Shouldn't it be after at least Halloween? Because they've already got Halloween stuff coming out soon, so. Uh, yeah, true, Dad. But still, Just saying. <laughs> but still, they, they want to get it ready. Like, I, honestly, I got no idea. They gotta get ready for November 1st. That's the trick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but People are already getting hyped for, uh, for like holidays. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but so it's like a few months before someone mentions it, they're like, "Just give it a break." It's like few, few four months. That's how I feel over here. Like when I see a commercial, mm. I'm like, "People, why, why?" Stop playing Christmas music. It's not even November yet. <laughs> uh, it's not even Halloween. They need to be scary people or sexy people walking down the street. I don't know. Did the problem just... I have with every Is Christmas that your season. Halloween? <laughs> well, it is not. Have you not seen the costumes that the store sells? Uh, uh, sure. There is that. No, you're not kidding. <laughs> yeah. I didn't celebrate. I, I didn't mean celebrate Halloween, but I know what's what you're talking about. <laughs> you don't celebrate Halloween? No, we don't. No, oh wow! Very well, few for, few people holiday. few people over here. Do but basically it's not a Polish holiday. It's not. It's not. It's I'm not sorry like for the your loss. <laughs> I know. I'm so freaking jealous. That's okay. You get over here and we'll put you in an awesome costume. <laughs> yeah, I'll be carting candy. <laughs> no, no, just, just by being in America, if you just want to have Halloween any day, it's called Hot Topic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 Wills. Ain't that call it an anime convention? Walmart. 
No, oh. anime convention. Anime conventions are where you get the really weirdos. <laughs> like, ain't that Halloween too? No, no, no. Halloween, you'll at least get kids or parents who are trying to just do right by their kids, or you'll get teenagers who just want a free hand out of candy, or they'll egg your house, to which then you hide in the bushes with a with the hose on, waiting for them to actually try it, and then when they do... The hose? They... No way, I'll take a paintball gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. If you leave actual welts on those who are considered youth, that's possibly something that might involve the police. Uh... <laughs> oh, no. However, them just getting cold, the oh, however, is a, it's a, nice, it's a nice compromise. Well, he said that he's getting a hose, why, why not just get a squirt gun, like a super soaker? Because those you have to make a lot of noise in order to do that with a hose, you just have to hide in the bushes, have the thing on full blast with a nozzle ready, and as soon as you let go of the nozzle, <laughs> jet stream! Well, you don't cheap out, get the battery powered super soakers, they exist. <laughs> yeah, sure, if I want to actually combine electricity and water, that sounds like a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> Hey, what's next? What, what's next on your great ideas, Norman? <laughs> Bathtub toast. Just got a flamethrower. Yeah, I was well, blaring hey, this one. My idea for a paintball gun is a bad one, but go get a flamethrower. <laughs> oh boy, she's uh, she's your girl. You guys are perfect know, for each other. She has to deal with it every day. Very much. <laughs> uh, perfect for each other. Oh. But... Do you believe I found the perfect girl? I'm going to keep this one. Yep. Uh, she's a keeper. Because <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the one who's always crazier than you is the one you want to stick with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Why not, right? <laughs> well, I'm also a gamer, so... <laughs> Yay. Uh, so, anywho, uh, that's the news for this week. Like, ain't much, but it's still something, right? Right. Anyway... <laughs> Thank you guys for coming on. Uh, it's it's really fun talking to you guys, and I wish you all the success. Thank mm. you so much, and thank thank you for having us. No problem. It's insane. Like for this week, it's kind of a boring show. Having you on talking about hypnotizing and also metalworks and discussing crazy things about stuff that was fun. Was it the first time someone mentioned the subject or something? No, this is the first time. Like literally, this is the first time. Oh. Ah. <laughs> nice. Much fun. Makes the show now feel combine like the two. <laughs> what the show and no 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 I mean he should we should now combine those two subjects metalworking and hypnotism <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> oh gosh! Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> will yep. probably get hurt. Yep yep we're all gonna die we're all gonna die. Just <laughs> call it now. Uh, but you'd be surprised at the way you die. You think it ain't how you expect it? <laughs> <laughs> you won't even see nothing. <laughs> And it was again, thank you guys. And where can they find you guys? For people who actually have questions, I have Tumblr. And for people who maybe, maybe interested in the commission or maybe just like see what I do, like, like as an artist, what I draw, I have also my Divan art. Ah, all, right. uh, all links will be provided in the description. So. Yeah. I'll put everything into the show notes. And Void, where can they find you? We do have a Facebook for both Emilia and I um, for the GoFundMe page, and in the long run, that's going to end up turning into our joint page which once we've moved over back to the U.S. So I'll just add in everything to the show notes, and well, thank you once again for coming on. It's a blast talking to you guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So for the audience at home, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbhmgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. And as for me, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. Links are in the show notes. And also, please subscribe to the new podcast, which is the Review and Discussion Show, available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. On this show, you'll get the chance to hear us if we'll talk about something else rather than ponies. Or ponies. And you can also catch Sapphire Heart <laughs> Songs, Go Gaga Over, Guess of the Week, or something like that. She is adorable, be cute. And, well, links will be in the show notes for that one too. 
And before I forget, Will, where can they find you? You can find me on <laughs> Willison at filmfiction.net or Willison on DeviantArt. All right, here then. I'll add it in the show notes. And I'm sure people love to read your fanfics or even see your art. Your art is really good. <laughs> if I ever update anything. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, they can always follow you on the PlayStation 40. They can always stalk you on the games. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> if they stalk me there, they'll realize how horrible I am. Well, <laughs> I'm sure it's not. Uh, I'm so. playing Dark Souls, man. I cannot get good. It's it's one of those games that you never get good. But anyway, we'll guys catch you next week. See ya. Bye-bye. So long, you beautiful people.